Hi everyone, it's Margaret here with 60 and Me. Welcome to a new day. Thanks a lot for being here this morning. Hope you're doing great. I'm thinking about you all as I start these conversations and just know that um, I'm here with you. I'm having my morning cup of tea as I always do. And I uh, hope that you've got something just relax, sit back. Maybe you're dashing off to work or you've got an appointment today, something that you've got, you know, been planning. Maybe you're traveling somewhere, going somewhere fun, visiting friends, family, whatever you're doing. Just just know that um, we're interested and uh, we're here for each other on this uh, crazy journey. Now, I'm drinking my uh, Yuyo tea. <laughs> I just love this package. I got this when I was traveling and it's Rui Bass, a lavender and elderflower. Uh, no connection to this company at all. I don't even know who they are, but I think they're in Norway. <laughs> but there it is. That's my yo-yo, yo-yo, yo-yo uh, tea. And it's really quite nice. It's caffeine free, but it's got lavender and elderflower. It's kind of interesting. So anyway, here we are. Um, thank you so much again for being here with us. Um, I uh, Oh, I wanted to mention my scarf today. This is something cool that happened on the weekend. Um, I went to um, a fabric store. I don't, don't really go in them because I don't, I don't sew. I don't have a sewing machine, but I do like to look at fabrics and I've got a huge um, textile passion and maybe some of you do too. But I found this line of um, fabric and it's very, very thin. I actually could just have it wrapped around my neck. I just have it literally put around and I asked them to cut me a piece that was 25 centimeters wide and then I just put it around my neck and it turned into this gorgeous scarf and it was just, I don't know, seven francs. But, you know, the, the whole, the, if you bought a dress, uh, a material for a dress it would cost a lot but they had um this particular brand had all kinds like this one here which i also love isn't that gorgeous it's just floral pretty and um you know i'm not going to put a hem or anything on them i'm just literally going to wear them around my neck like this and it was just such a fun way to buy a scarf um, based on the material that I liked rather than just looking for the scarf and hope, hopefully liking the material and uh, pattern. So that was kind of fun. But um, anyway, I don't know what you're wearing today, but I'm sure it's something wonderful. And uh, if you've got any little tricks like that for, deck, for accessorizing, always let us know. So as I mentioned, uh, textiles are one of my passionate things. I really, really love them. And this reminded me of the article today by uh, Stephanie Raffalock, who's one of our bloggers. She's awesome. Very, very cool lady. And she wrote this article about finding your bliss. And I really love this um, this conversation because I'm a, uh, I think I told you I have a degree in comparative religion and I studied um, uh, Joseph Campbell uh, in, in college. He, he, of course, wrote about mythology and he started that phrase, follow your bliss. And he was talking about it, I think, in a broader context than mythology. I'm just realizing I've got him on my bookshelf behind me here. I have several books by, by Joseph Campbell, but um, it was really about loving what you do and doing what you love and finding joy and ex and that in your ex the experience of your life doing those things that make you joyful and happy and you know we, we talk about that in a casual way like oh follow your bliss as if it's sort of some uh, it frees you from responsibility for thinking logically about things and I, I know that phrase about follow your heart well yes follow your heart but always you know have your brain behind you checking out the detail but this is more than that it's more of a religious um, spiritual not so much religious but spiritual experience to follow your bliss losing your sight itself in the rapture of life's experience. So are you following your bliss? Now, Stephanie talks about this in terms of, um, you know, friends that she has who are doing all kinds of amazing things with their lives. You know, they're becoming, uh, they're right, they're starting to write, they're, they're doing their crafts, they're painting, they're climbing mountains, they're traveling to, uh, to adventurous places, or just getting on the road solo for the first time in their lives. They're doing things that are truly in her opinion, following her their bliss. Artists and athletes, she talks about. And she, she really means this with all her heart. Now, it involves a certain surrender because I think it involves, in many ways, giving up the, the boundaries that you expected from your life. You know, you may have done all kinds of things in your um, in your youth or in your, in your childhood that, that ended when you got married or had children or you just started growing up, <laughs> you know, working and um, following the, the script that society gives us. And then, you know, your children leave home, your friends move away, your job perhaps ends, and you can, you can then start doing things that are following your bliss. You know, things that actually 
uh, make you feel really, really happy about yourself and, and feel fulfilled. Now, there's some things you can do here. I'm just actually looking at, at her, no, her notes here because she was saying, for example, her mom. Her mom had um, arthritic hands, and but she didn't let that stop her. You know, she didn't let it stop her following her bliss. She just kept on doing things that um, you know she could do. She recognized her boundaries. She recognized that she had challenges, but she didn't stop. She didn't stop um, enjoying the things that gave her joy. And yeah, she didn't have as much energy perhaps as she did when she was in her 40s or 50s. But even as a 90-year-old woman, Stephanie says she kept on going. And she ha- she used to hit, knit hats for babies and, you know, to volunteer uh, knitting with her knitting and sewing. And this was her bliss. So it doesn't have to be a big thing. You know, it doesn't have to be following your bliss to to do a world cruise or to travel the world. It can be something actually very, very simple. As long, Stephanie reminds us, as it is done with love. If it's done with love, then I think that that's, you know, that's the secret to this whole thing. Now, she talks about creative um, creativity and, mod- and and finding your passion. And, you know, I was just reading a quote actually by a very um, well-known artist. His name is um, Mat- uh, Mat- Matisse, Henri Matisse. And um, I was looking at some pictures of his the, um, the other day, and I loved his art. I really did. But he, his quotes were actually almost as good as his art. And he said something like, being creative requires cor- courage. And I thought that was a really, really good way of explaining about creativity, because it's, it's not something that you know, you're creating something out of nothing. You know, you're looking at the void. <laughs> you're looking into the void and you're creating something that is meaningful to you and hopefully meaningful to others. And that, I think, is the biggest challenge. Oh, gee, you know, we have our beautiful deck of cards. I was going to mention these to you. That was a, There's a card in there about finding your creativity. And, you know, I want to mention these cards to people because not everyone knows about them. And these are our um, inspirational cards that we put together um, to really give you context and challenge for your, um, for your life in your 60s and finding your passion. And if I was to think about one thing that kind of holds these uh, cards together and the themes that we developed and the little paragraphs that we that we write on the back of the card, it's really got to do with creativity, discovering yourself. And in doing that, you can forgive yourself, you can let go of regrets, you can all these things kind of fall into place when you've when you've shifted your mindset and decided that you are going to live a life of a blissful creativity. You're going to let yourself be you. Now, I think that um, Stephanie really had a good point. I was going to, there was a quote I think she put here, but I, I, I can't seem to find it. But she, she says, um, oh, it's a Mother Teresa quote. This was the one. She says, we cannot do great things. We can only do small things with great love. And that's following your joy doing small things but making sure it's something that you totally love and that you uh, that your your relationship to it is blissful and um so that that to me means a lot and hopefully you're being gentle with yourself when we talk about these kinds of things and not thinking i'm not following my bliss because i don't have enough money i don't live in the right place i don't have the right means and i guess the point here is if following your bliss is not you know it's not going to be perfect, perfectly what you want. You can find ways like Stephanie's mom, you know, doing what she could with her arthritic hands and Mother Teresa saying, you know, it doesn't matter how big the thing is you do, just love it and love and feel blissful and joyful about it. So I guess I'd like to, you know, ask us to focus on life, not anything else, and just be happy with what we have and make the best of our a really beautiful opportunity on this planet. So anyway, I do hope that that was inspirational for you. I really check, check out the article by Stephanie. It's very well written and she really does get to the heart of this conversation. But I guess my question back to you is, are you following your bliss? What is your bliss? What brings you joy in this life? really would like to know. You know, please share your precious thoughts and your and the things that mean that are important to you. How are you following your bliss in your life? I mean, for me, I this is this is my bliss. I really love what I'm doing with 60 and me. I really love the sharing, the compassion, the kindness that we're able to develop here, and that's my bliss. I I just love doing that. Yes, I love to travel. Yes, I love my family. Yes, I I love so many things and that does bring me joy. But in terms of really finding finding my purpose, 
I, I look at all the things I did in my life and they led to this point, right to this point, to you. And that you is bigger than, than me. <laughs> yeah, we're all the one. So thank you again for being here, everybody. Tell us what your bliss is, what you do that brings you joy. And I look forward to reading your comments and joining the conversation and uh, take very good care, everybody. Bye-bye for now.